As of right now, we're keeping a close eye on three tropical disturbances that have the possibility of developing into a tropical storm. We first have Invest 95L, which has been getting a lot of convective activity going as of recent, and it's now approaching the Windward Islands. We also have a low pressure system located just south of Bermuda, which could approach the United States and bring an enhanced amount of rainfall, and also has the possibility of developing into a tropical storm. And we have another tropical disturbance now coming off the west acting coast where the computer models have been leaning towards a strong tropical storm moving just to the north of the caribbean and potentially developing close to if not over tropical storm status as runs have been shifting their forecasts regarding the strength of this tropical wave so we're gonna take a close look at three of these tropical disturbances and see what impacts you could expect in the caribbean and the united states Here's a quick look at the global tropics hazards outlook and it does look a bit concerning for the Caribbean islands because there is a possibility of tropical cyclone development as we approach a weekend into early next week where we have around a 40% chance of tropical cyclone development regarding the possibility of this tropical wave now coming off the west African coast and even if this doesn't develop it's likely that it'll bring very heavy rainfall to many portions of the Caribbean islands where flooding could be an issue as well as gustier winds and rough surf so you need to keep a close eye on this as you approach the weekend and into early next week taking a look at the more short-term future however within the next seven days based on the latest forecast from the national hurricane center we have two tropical disturbances at least within the next seven days that have the possibility of developing into tropical storm we have this low pressure system right here newly um, identified by the National Hurricane Center as having a possibility where we have a low 20% chance within the next seven days. But keep in mind, there's still a decent amount of time to really get the forecast very accurate. So we could see the chance fluctuate over the next several days, depending on how the conditions will be as this approaches the southeast coast. There could be the possibility that the wind shear will lighten down and the chance will increase. And the southeast could experience tropical storm like conditions even if this might not be considered a storm system that's tropical storm status so you still need to keep this in mind along the southeast coast for heavy rainfall as well as rough surf and then for invest 95l the chance has significantly lowered compared to the past couple of days we still have a 20 percent chance um within the next 48 hours but if it this storm system wants to develop it's going to need to develop relatively soon before it encounters a much stronger wind shear that's just the west of the windward island so if um and while there is a decent amount of convection going on surrounding the storm system it's dealing with a high amount of wind shear which makes it less likely it's going to develop into a tropical storm but still something to keep in mind right around the windward and leeward islands for mainly for heavy rainfall as well as the northern portion of venezuela and trinidad that needs to uh, pay close attention to this as well Take a look now at the latest run of the GFS model. We see that there's going to be plenty of moisture surrounding Invest 95L, which could raise concern of flooding. So keep that in mind right around the windward um, and um, leeward islands um, over the next 24 to 48 hours. But take a, look, a closer look at this low pressure system just to the south of Bermuda. We do see that there's a decent amount of moisture surrounding it, and there isn't a lot of dry air. And it's, of course, over very warm sea surf temperatures. Sea surf temperatures are, are much warmer than average for this time of the year, hovering close to, if not slightly over, the 90 degree range, which is just asking for plenty of lift to occur even under even if it were surrounded by a large area of stable air but in this case there is a lot of stable air surrounding it and there's a decent amount of moisture and we do see the gfs model wants to increase the amount of convective activity surrounding this low pressure zone and, and brings very heavy rainfall to florida as i wouldn't be surprised if we do see an enhanced risk of flash flooding over the state of florida around the thursday time frame and this will continue into friday and potentially into Saturday as well. Now the GFS model does not develop this low pressure system as it seems like the wind shear is going to be pretty strong. So of course a lot of the energy and air molecules are going to be spaced out a little bit too much so we won't see enough convergence occur around the center of circulation which would be located right around this area for this that at least in this scenario have the wind speed to be considered a tropical cyclone or the rotation but 
this still brings a heavy amount of rainfall to florida and potentially other southeast states as well where georgia and south carolina could get involved so if we were to see this storm system develop well, we're gonna need to see the wind shear definitely decrease and moving on to the uh, next tropical cyclone on um, potential tropical cyclone which could become either tropical storm emily tropical storm franklin tropical storm um storm girt depending on if these two tropical disturbances develop which is looking rather low at this time but in terms of this um tropical cyclone it's still too far um the forecast is still too far out to say for certain if the chance that this will develop will be low or high or maybe moderate we're definitely gonna need to wait and see how the dry air will build over the next several days over the main development region because the gfs model is suddenly favoring a lot more moisture surrounding the storm system than the european model so of course a GFS model is taking a storm that definitely has a much higher potential. It's hovering around tropical storm status. However, another thing that won't be helpful is that the wind shear, at least surrounding the center circulation, should be relatively strong. So that's gonna force a lot of the moisture as well as the convective activity to be separated from the low level center. So it, the air molecules will be too spread out and the convergence, and there won't be a strong amount enough amount of convergence and divergence in the upper levels of the atmosphere for of this storm to have a very um efficient heat engine but we still do see very heavy rainfall over puerto rico the lesser antilles the mini grand public gets involved so is haiti so even if this doesn't develop this still should be a concern when it comes to flooding by early next week right around the tuesday to wednesday time frame especially for the dominican republic so you want to at least be aware of this and if we were to see this storm develop we're gonna need to see the wind shear wind down let me show you guys the wind shear map right now taking a look at the wind shear forecast provided from the gfs model and we clearly see the reason why um, these at least these first two initial storm systems were um, are expected to struggle to develop the wind shear is just very strong at this time we have an upper level low located just in north of puerto rico an upper level low located right around cuba and that's bringing a strong amount of wind shear over the caribbean so despite the fact that there's a decent amount of convection around invest 95 l the wind shear is just too strong and moving on to the southeast coast where I, I, on the next potential tropical storm could form we see that the wind shear doesn't really die down that much it might not necessarily be strong enough and if this storm system is able to be located in this small area where the wind shear is relatively light and it's able to stay small enough to where the upper level winds won't play much of a factor when it comes to the organization and structure of this storm then we'd certainly that certainly will raise a chance that we'll see a tropical storm just off the united states coast bringing heavy rainfall as well as gusty winds so you definitely want to keep a close eye on this right up along the southeast coast so of course if this were to develop i don't think it'll have much um i don't think it's it'll develop into a very powerful storm it won't have a lot of time before eventually it turns northeastward thanks to a weakness in ridging and that's when the wind shear will become too strong at that point and plus it's likely going to hug the coast so it'll deal with a lot of land interaction to reach the strength that it could um if it were over the open ocean so i don't i wouldn't say that it, it'll have a possibility of reaching hurricane status of course not this early but we could still potentially see a tropical storm impact the southeast and mainly bring impacts when it comes to heavy rainfall so you want to pay close attention to this but if this storm were to develop it's going to need to be in this small area where the wind shear is very light which has yet to be seen but the computer models are leaning towards the wind shear being a little too strong for this old pressure system to develop into tropical cyclone but still keep this in mind along the coast now moving on to our third disturbance coming off the west african coast we do see that it's going to be in a small area where the wind shear might be light to moderate but we do see the wind shear at least around this storm system does become quite strong it'll help the outflow of this storm system certainly but with the wind shear this strong just outside the center circulation that definitely will 
um, create that definitely will um, keep the, the center circulation potentially slightly too disorganized or too disorientated compared to the low level center because the upper level winds will sort of push away um, that rotation that would happen in the upper levels away from the low level center and that will create sort of a lopsided type system where the energy isn't really focusing on one area and it's just a little bit too spaced out for the convergent uh, enough convergence to occur to for this to develop however we still do see the gfs model despite this wants to develop this close to if not above tropical storm status depending on how big the storm is because give or take a thousand eleven millibars that could definitely be tropical storm status but if it's too elongated then it likely wouldn't be um, it wouldn't reach that status, but still something to keep in mind, especially as this approaches the Caribbean, because I do think that it's likely to impact you guys with heavy rain, whether this develops or not. We're just going to need to wait and see if the GFS model will be the more correct model, because GFS model does bring a lot more rain to the Caribbean. Now, in terms of the track forecast, so of course, the amount of ridging that builds over northern Atlantic will be a key thing in determining where exactly these next three disturbances go so we have a big ridge that's expected to steer invest 95l to straight towards the southern direction bringing more rain to the windward islands as well as um the northern portion of venezuela and this forecast seems pretty certain at this time it's unlikely that this ridge will completely die out and allow this sto storm to move further northward so it's so unlikely we're going to see major shifts with that forecast now for this disturbance we do see the main steering flow will be this ridge however it's expected that eventually um within um um within right around the 84 hour mark we're going to see a small area where the um there will be a small uh, where the um ridging will be weak and this storm system could have a possibility of move uh, eventually escaping and moving northward once this ridge really weakens right around um right around the saturday time frame and that's when this trough should pick it up so depending on how strong this dip is and how fast it moves in, um into the northeast um by this weekend that'll play a big role in determining how long this stays over southeast hopefully this trough digs in fairly quickly and fairly deep so it won't last so it won't bring a prolonged um prolonged impacts when it comes to rainfall but you never know so you're gonna need to definitely play close to attention to that to that possibility now in terms of this their disturbance of main steering flow will be this bermuda is or is high there could be the possibility that a trough digs down we do see a weakness in ridging here and steers this northward to avoid the caribbean islands which would definitely be the best case scenario however we do see that the GFS model is still expecting the ridging to be a bit too strong, and so is the European model at this time. But we do see eventually the rit, the rit, um this low could dig deep enough to steer this away from at least direct impact. So we're gonna need to pay close attention to how the ridging will build over the next several days. And the European model is forecasting a similar scenario. Here's a quick look at the European model's forecast, and it's fairly similar to GFS model. Expects a similar track and strength when it comes to Invest 95L. Just expect heavy rainfall right around Venezuela and the Windward Islands. And then for this old person, some very similar as well. Um, a bit more dry air than the GFS model, but the wind shear is um, the sh around the same as well as um, who it impacts. It brings heavy rainfall to the coast of Florida and the, um, South Carolina. A little less than GFS, but still expect sort of the same impacts. Not expecting any development as well for, at least from the European model. As of right now, we're going to need to see the wind shear decrease. And then as for this third disturbance, what's interesting is that the European model is expecting the dry air to completely win out, where it just completely fizzles out by the time this approaches the Caribbean, which would definitely be the best case scenario. And we see primarily dry conditions over the Caribbean islands. Maybe some scattered thunder showers right around the windward and leeward islands, but the dry air just becomes too much. And there's a bit of Saharan dust over the main development region. So that wouldn't be surprising as well. So we're gonna need to pay close attention to how strong northeasterly winds will be to determine the amount of dry air um, to see if this storm will fizzle out. Here's what the GFS ensemble members are stating at this time when it comes to um, this next disturbance. And it does become a bit concerning because we do see it, some of them do want to take it above tropical storm status into quite strong storms. But the good news is that 
A lot of the ensemble members are leaning towards this, if this were developed, just moving just north of the bigger Caribbean islands, such as Puerto Rico, um, Dominican Republic, as well as Haiti and Jamaica. Um, but it still could bring heavy rainfall to you guys, especially on the southern side. And this could still impact the Lesser Antilles directly. So you still want to be aware of this. And the forecast is certainly variable to change depending on how quickly this um, or how much this next trough that moves into the northeast by um, next week um, digs in. So we're going to definitely pay close attention to that. The European model is taking a different approach as expects not only this, um, a lot of this um, trouble wave to fizzle out, but it expects it to take a track well for northward since it expects a trough to dig in south enough to pull this um, up towards the mid latitudes, which would certainly be the best case scenario. We do have one ensemble member wanting to develop this into near or above tropical storm status just off the coast of the southeast but it's one ensemble member so i would take that with a huge grain assault and then for invest 95 l we do have one that wants to strengthen it but again i wouldn't put a lot of emphasis on that one ensemble member because it seems like after the time that it approaches just so west of puerto rico the chance will almost completely disappear for invest 95 l to develop into tropical storm thanks to strong wind shear so here's my overall forecast when it comes to the next few tropical disturbances moving into the Atlantic. So for the possibility of Tropical Storm Emily or Tropical Storm Franklin, um, the chance is rather low. It seems like the wind shear in both these areas may be a little bit too strong, but there still could be that possibility because the convection will be there for both of these disturbances. And then for Tropical Storm Gert, um, it's still too far to say for certain how this will strengthen. If, the, if it takes a GFS model scenario, then the chance will certainly rise um, for this to develop into a tropical storm. But if it were for, um, to take the European model scenario, not so much. Dry air would be too much. Um, but So we're definitely going to need to stay tuned as computer models get more accurate with their forecast. But um, that's it for now, guys. And I thank you guys for watching.